This video will show you uh, the process of georeferencing, essentially how to take a digital map that doesn't have any spatial information attached to it and uh, give it spatial information so that it overlays with other GIS data layers. Um, as you know, there are many um, maps out there, digital maps that do not overlay in GIS. So um, we have the opportunity to take some of these map collections and georeference them. What we are going to be georeferencing is what's called a, a Sanborn uh, fire insurance map uh, for anywhere in Pennsylvania that you might be interested in. And I would suggest like a hometown or a place that's of significant um, uh, value to you. Um, so you'll be exploring that map collection, but I also want to show you two other map collections that are out there that are just interesting in terms of Pennsylvania history. The first are the uh, uh, township warranty maps, and these are housed at the um, Pennsylvania uh, State Archives, um, and uh, you can access these maps from their uh, web page, um, and they are sorted by county, and then um, you go to the particular municipality that you might be interested in uh, within that county. So for instance, I'm interested in um, North Heidelberg um, Township in Berks County, Pennsylvania, because that's where my original ancestors uh, lived uh, when they uh, moved to the United States. Um, and this is showing, this particular map here is showing you all the original um, uh, land uh, grants um, for um, this particular township. And as you zoom in on uh, these, you're going to see that uh, each one of these properties has the meets and bounds information, and essentially the, the property line information, um, as well as some who uh, the uh, person is that um, owned that particular property. So like if I zoom in again, you can kind of start seeing some of those details. Um, which is kind of uh, interesting, and this is especially interesting for those of you that might be interested in uh, genealogy and family history and so forth, and this just happens, again, to be where um, my original ancestors uh, lived. What's cool about this, though, is that you can georeference this in GIS and overlay it, and if you really want to geek out with it, you can then do what's called digitize. You could digitize each one of these uh, properties so that you have a map as it existed back uh, whenever this year was uh, that this map is from. So it's a really kind of cool um, way of uh, tracking um, properties through uh, time. So that's one cool resource that's available. The second are the Mellish um, Whiteside maps. These are maps of each of, um, of the counties in Pennsylvania that show township lines, um, roads, and, and some other inf interesting information as they existed um, you know, back, I guess it would be, around 1820-ish, I, I think it is. Um, but again, if you go to, to this by whatever county that you might be interested in, uh, it shows you the um, original township lines. Um, and uh, you can kind of see how that uh, your particular county has uh, grown and changed uh, over time. Uh, so again, good opportunity for georeferencing it. Uh, then we could, again, trace the old uh, boundaries so that we can do a comparison to current day boundaries. So I'm going to show you the georeference, um, ge georeferencing process from start to finish. And as I'm going through this process, I am going to point out areas where you should be paying particular attention. Um, these are the pitfalls that I've seen um, through the years that students have with georeferencing. They're very simple things, but they are also very simple things to overlook. So I'm going to Again, draw your attention to them, so hopefully your assignment goes as smoothly as possible. So to get started georeferencing, we're going to open up um, a new ArcGIS Pro project. And when we open this up, we are going to create a, a new uh, map, um, and we are going to uh, just call it uh, whatever uh, the name of the town is that you will be georeferencing. And I'm going to be georeferencing a um, map in uh, Millersburg, and um, this is where it's going to be saved, and then I hit OK. Once I have this um, new map um, uh, ready to go, I'm going to shut off everything over here because I want to see as much map space as possible 
um, when, when I am georeferencing, just makes the process a little bit uh, easier. But now I have to get go get the map that I am going to georeference. And the place you're going to go to get uh, that map is from the uh, Penn State uh, collection. Um, and this houses all the Pennsylvania Sanborn maps. Uh, they're not available for every single town in Pennsylvania, but you can see that it has a pretty good list of, of towns that uh, are available. You can select the one of your choice. I'm going to select Millersburg. And then um, from here, you're going to see that the Sanborn maps are available in different time periods. Uh, uh, for instance, for Millersburg, 1890, 96, and then 1902. You can pick, again, the year of your choice. It's totally your call. And then you want to select the map that you're going to georeference. But a tip uh, here, don't select the map that you see that looks like this, that has like an index as part of the page. Make sure you select a map that's a little bit more like this. That is just the, the uh, complete map on a uh, page. They're um, a little bit easier in terms of getting started with uh, georeferencing. Once you have made your selection for a map that you want to georeference, you come here to the download option and you download the image at full size. Uh, select it, it'll download, uh, place it into the um, folder of your choice, then you're ready to go back to ArcGIS Pro to uh, map um, uh, this um, or georeference this uh, image. So to get started with this process, the first thing that we want to do on the base map is locate the town where that we are going to be um, using uh, to georeference. And again, my a town is Millersburg, Pennsylvania. So I'm going to go to my map tab, then locate, then go to Millersburg, PA. And you can also just zoom to it on your map. You don't have to use the fine tool. It's however you want to do it. And I would suggest, you know, before you even try starting to georeference, that you find the area of town where your map uh, exists. Um, for instance, my map, if I open it up, um, doo -doo -doo, there it is. And, um, my map area is sh showing from uh, North Street in the, the north and Love Street in the south, uh, Marcus Street and Walnut Street. Kind of know what's in your, the area that you and what you're going to be georeferencing, then you can um, zoom to that same area on your map. Again, it's just going to make your life a lot uh, less painful if you get uh, yourself kind of situated beforehand rather than doing it after you um, uh, get uh, your uh, other image out of here. So here's North Street. Uh, Love Street is kind of down this way. It doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, Walnut Street's here and then Market Street's here. So now that I, I have my base map situated into the general area where my other map exists, I'm going to add that other map uh, to uh, the project by going to Add Data and then navigating to the folder that I have it in. And again, if you're not seeing your image here, what you can do, make sure you click in here, hit F5 on your keyboard. It refreshes uh, everything in that folder, and then you will see uh, your uh, data. Um, my map is called this. Single click it. This is tip number one. Single click your, um, your image or, or your map. Do not double click it. Single click it and hit OK. It adds it over here in your table of contents, but you don't see it on your map. The reason you don't see it on your map is because it doesn't know where to place itself because it doesn't have any spatial data attached to it. That's what we're doing here is giving it that spatial information. So in order to be able to see it in the same space that we have this map, we come to our imagery tab, select georeference, and then uh, from here, we get a new toolbar uh, or ribbon option that sh has all our georeferencing tools available to us. So what we're going to do um, is first um, make sure that we get this map into our display area. And we do that by clicking Fit to Display. And voila, both maps are in the same uh, spatial um, plane. So now what we do is a process of adding control points. Essentially, um, 
areas that are the exact same spot on each map. So I would put a control point, say, for instance, at the intersection of North and, and Market on this map, and then go to the um, other map and um, put the other control point at that same location. And we do this um, until we have um, a good geo reference where you can see that both maps are um, overlaying uh, properly. So a hint here that I'll give you, and this is probably one of the biggest sources of frustration. I know I've already been frustrated um, by this. In terms of you're going to be need to navigate your map as you're georeferencing, which can be a little tricky. Do your navigation with your mouse center scroll button only. Um, you can, if you press down on it, you can move uh, your map from uh, left to right, uh, and you can uh, zoom in uh, to things. So it does really help in terms of uh, getting uh, situated uh, for um, your uh, georeference. Again, I'm going to just move that around a little bit. Okay, so I'm ready to establish my uh, control points. And again, I just actually moved my map just a little bit uh, where I didn't want it to go. And let me just there we are. Okay, so my first control point I'm going to be adding um, at that um, intersection of North and um, Market. So I go to my geo reference, add control point, and I put a point at that intersection. Put a point at that. There we go. At that intersection, I then come over here to my contents and turn off that map. I find the exact same spot um, on my base map, which is right here, and put that control point there. I come back to my map, and notice how it automatically shifted itself um, to uh, move, uh, which is very useful um, as we are georeferencing. When we are georeferencing a map, it's really important to spread out your control points. Don't put a whole bunch of them really close together because it's going to totally tweak your image and it's going to make for a, a georeference that's not going to work. Um, when you georeference something, spread them out on this um, map. And there can be times when that's difficult. These are pretty easy maps to georeference, but when you have aerial photos, sometimes it's a little bit more difficult to spread them out. Uh, but again, spread them out as much as possible. So my next control point, I'm going to put at the corner uh, or the intersection of Union and Walnut. So here we are at Union and Walnut on our non-geo-referenced image, and then we go to that same place on this map. And again, I'm going to kind of move over. Again, I'm just using that center scroll uh, button on my mouse. I'm not uh, touching anything else to navigate, um, and I it can be hard to get used to, but if you can master that, you're going to like georeferencing. So now notice how it, it tweaked it again. It, it uh, warped it. Um, so we, we essentially just uh, continue to add control points, this time at the corner of or the intersection of um, that's Walnut and North. So I come in here to Walnut and North and place that at the intersection. And turn it back on, and it moves it over. And you continue doing this for at least a minimum of four points. Um, more is better because it gets it um, more better uh, georeferenced. Um, this next one, I'm going to do the, at the corner of Union and Market. Our intersection, I keep saying corner. And again, it moves it. So um, I have four points, and generally it's pretty, it's looking okay. Uh, if this was a real um, situation uh, where I was going to be using this uh, in, in a little bit more detail, I would um, probably be trying to get up to about 10 uh, control points. But for now, I'm just going to call this good for the sake of de demonstration. So now that I have my control points uh, added and my map warped, I'm not done. This map is still not georeferenced. It's ready to be georeferenced and rectified, but it's not there yet. We have to uh, export this so that it uh, um, saves the, the um, spatial information. And you have two options here. You can do the save, 
where it saves it to your original image or save as new to uh, save it um, as a new um, image and I tend to like to do that because I like having both the original and the, the new one um, so I'm going to hit save as new and then um, I'm going to um, uh, save it and right now it's saying that it's going to be a, a TIFF so we keep that um, it's going to be in this a coordinate system which is the same coordinate system as our base map and then we keep uh, scrolling down here and then just click export and you can see it added uh, it to the map you also see that it added a nasty black collar uh, to it which doesn't look so awesome what we can do is just go to our symbology uh, area and just uh, change the band I believe, uh, yeah just change uh, the alpha band to band one and it gets rid of that uh, black collar but um, turning off this map for a moment, you can see um, uh, the, the uh, georeferenced uh, image. Now, uh, just to show you the other way of, of saving this, I did the save as new um, so that it wouldn't impact the original. But if you don't care about that or not to concern, you can just hit save. And it will save uh, that um, information uh, to this automatically. Uh, and if you go to properties and go to source, you will see that and what is that Doo -doo -doo. oh there it is spatial reference that it now has a coordinate system and, and a spatial reference uh, to it where, where it did not have that uh, previously so again um, really kind of a straightforward process it just takes a little bit to get used to in terms of uh, the navigation uh, with the mouse and establishing the, the control points now um, let's say you happen to uh, mess up one of your control points um, while you're in the process of doing that and you want to delete them you can go to your control point table and this allows you to um, uh, remove any that you might have messed up you just uh, highlight it like this and then uh, hit delete select it uh, or you can you know delete all of them um, if you need to start over uh, so I do expect that you might have to, uh, to you, if you accidentally make a mistake this is an easy way to kind of fix that um, mistake if things are on south like are looking really crazy uh, with your um, map I would suggest um, just closing arc map and re-adding it um, because if after you tweak with the um, image a while and you're um, establishing control points and things are going maybe a little crazy uh, it, it's kind of hard to get it back to where you might want it so starting from scratch is usually a lot more quick in terms of time than trying to fix something that got messed up so don't be scared to start over it's actually sometimes a lot easier if you do start over with this so I hope you have fun with this assignment georeferencing is a lot of fun you can do a lot of really cool things with it um, let me know if you have any questions and good luck on the assignment this week